Hi, I'm Dr. Saab. This is the new 2023 Mercedes-Benz A-Class. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the main features of this Mercedes-Benz A-Class A200 AMG Line Executive and the A180 AMG Line Executive Hatchback. This video is perfect if you have just bought the new A-Class or if you're thinking about buying one. This video is part two. Check out part one to learn about the main features that the driver needs to know. Then watch this video, part two, to learn everything about this Mercedes-Benz A-Class. If you wanna learn about what is standard and what are options, please check out my video from the link below or at the top right corner of this video. Big thank you to Lucas Mercedes-Benz Wolverhampton for helping me make this video possible. But next, I'm gonna show you the infotainment screen and the first thing I'm going to do is connect my phone to this car. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is go to phone and now it's searching for known devices. So I need to go onto my phone, go to settings, now go to Bluetooth. And then what I'll do is I might try and connect it on here. So I'll click, click on connect, connect new device, the SPI phone. I want to connect that, click on that. And now I'll get this passkey. Make sure it marries up with this one. So I'll click pair. And then what you want to do is make sure you up, click on allow. And then you want to click on use CarPlay. And then on your infotainment, what you can do is click on OK, start Apple CarPlay. And now you can see it's connected my phone. I can connect my music off my phone as well. And then that plus button is actually for Apple CarPlay. And you can see it's automatically come on. How cool is that? Now I've got Apple CarPlay in full screen as well. So the pre-facelift, it used to be a small, smaller Apple CarPlay. You had the black bits on the end here. Now it's full display, apart from this little bit here, which is fine. I don't mind that. I can live with that. Still a nice big screen. As you can see, as I'm driving, uh, I'm missing that bit anyway, so it's quite useful to have that little gap. Now, I've got Apple CarPlay in my car, and I can connect my music on here. I've got all my music on here, if I click here. I've got all my apps. Very, very useful. Connect my music, my messages, settings can change all of this as well which is really really useful I prefer to use Spotify what do you guys prefer let me know do you prefer Apple music Amazon music what do you prefer to use let me know do you think uh, using Apple CarPlay is good these are some of the apps that I've uh, downloaded now if you like Punjabi music that's quite a good app um, I haven't used it in ages because I use Spotify more, but I have got it downloaded just in case. You've got your radio apps, Flitzmeister. Now, I haven't used this properly yet, but apparently uh, as you're driving, it'll let you know of any speed cameras that are working. So that's really useful. I actually use uh, Waze a lot. I prefer to use Waze. And I find I get out of traffic using Waze quite often. So that's a really useful app. But these are all the main apps that I have on my phone for Apple CarPlay. You can change all the different stuff here as well, which is really, really useful. And then in here you can say, uh, hey Siri, what's the weather like? And it'll tell you. So that's quite useful. I was using a spare phone, which doesn't have a SIM card in it. And then if I want to go back to the MBOX system, just click the home button. And then you can see Apple CarPlay. If I want to get back to Apple CarPlay, just click on Apple CarPlay. And there, I'm back in Apple CarPlay. Very simple to use. And then I can do the same. I think if I click on Apple CarPlay there, if I click home on the steering wheel, you can see it takes me back to the main MBOX system, which is very, very useful. What you might want to do on your phone, you might want to just make sure that you click on I here, change the device type, and change the device type to car stereo, 
that might be useful just so it's set up correctly for you and that's it that's connected perfectly now to use a sat nav it's really easy you can just click on search here and actually enter your destination so if i write wv2 4hd and i think that take that is the address for this dealership there it is click on that and then you'll take you to your destination as easy as that so this car is using uh, zero layer as well and i'll show you what that does very soon but you can see if you want to look at the routes that you can do or just see what's in the vicinity so here you can see what's any local shops stuff like that parking that's really useful oh i've just lost that so let's see oh i didn't set it did i so w v two four h d give it a click and then when i'm happy i'll just click on let's go and that's it that's going to take me to my destination as quick as that and then here you can see we're using zero layer so it's actually got some useful information so it knows if i want to connect if i want to quickly go to my phone i can click there I can quickly, uh, I can change music tracks here as well. It's quite handy to have that there, I think. All to hand. And as you're driving throughout the day, so in the morning, you may prefer to ring someone. Uh, it will prompt there, like, do you want to call this person? And then in the night, you might want to call someone and it'll prompt that person in the night. So it's really useful and it's very clever. It's using AI. So you've got that there. You can unmute the sound. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Now a top tip, when the sat-nav talks, then adjust the volume of the sat-nav. That's the only way to adjust the volume for the sat-nav. So as, a, as she's talking, I'm going to adjust the volume. Please proceed to the highlighted route. And you can see I can now adjust the volume. So you do have to do, you can only change the volume when she's talking. Highlighted route. Top tip, just do that. And then if I click there, you can see the, the full details of what streets I need to go to. Very nice, very easy. I can change the map if I need to, to a 2D map, uh, to north mode. I can see the full route if I need to, which I think is very useful. And then to zoom in and out, you can just do that, which is nice and simple. I love that. Very simple, very clear as well. If I want to leave this page, I can click on home. If I want to go back to the sat nav, I just click nav. And then this button, you can see I've got some more information. So if I need to go other routes, where the nearest parking is, where to fuel. And then this button, if I click that, it just allows to see any traffic on route. Now to get that full capability, you do need to be connected to Mercedes Me. And I'll explain that a bit shortly about how to do that properly. And then you've got other settings here as well. And so you can avoid toll roads if you want to do that, you can. And then if I go back, if I click on this button here, the flag, that will then end the, the actual sat nav. And now uh, there's nothing in the sat nav. And then if I'm in the navigation screen, I can just click where to, and then click here to enter any postcodes or addresses. Now I always recommend a postcode or you could just use a previous destination if it's a place where you've been. You can set your home and work address as well if you want to. I wouldn't recommend doing that, not on the actual, on the car, because if someone was to steal your keys, then chances are your home keys are with that key. Uh, so they'll know where your home address is. So I wouldn't actually set that. You could set your work, but if you have your work keys, then probably no, don't do that either. But you'll see the previous destinations appear here as well, which is quite useful. I've shown you navigation, I've shown you phone, and then if I show you radio, here you've got your radio, and you can just swipe just like that to change radio. I can click on it to get a full screen of it if I want to. Um, if I want to see a full list, click on this one. And you can see if I star it, it then saves as a favorite and it'll pop into my favorites list. If I go back, I can then see different options. I've got information if I need it as well. And then you can change the settings. 
you can adjust where the fader is as well so if you want the speakers to be more forward or rear now i think that's really useful you know on a long journey i like to have the speakers on on the front and then if my daughter's in the back of the car she usually has her ipad There's always your ipad on her headphones she can then listen to her ipad with no problems and i can have the volume up to a reasonable volume and enjoy my music so that's a really useful feature i think you can then set the equalizing here you can change the radio announcement if you need to so that's very useful and then if i go back oh there was settings as well so what was that oh yeah there's more settings more traffic announcements that you can do as well which is useful that just takes you back to the radio settings again and then if you want to see your favorites click on favorites and now you can see they've all popped into your favorites if I want to get rid of a favorite so if I want to get rid of radio one I go into my favorites there's three dots here I can delete entry I can edit it so I can move the position of it if I need to that's quite useful and then if I go back to the list click on here I can then unstar it or star it as a favorite again and I think that's a really useful feature to have next I'm going to show you media so you can connect a USB-C, your music from USB here as well. You can connect to USB if you want to. You can stream music off your phone as well if you want to, or from another device. You can connect two phones as well. I should have mentioned that earlier. And you've got settings here as well. Again, you can adjust the sound settings here, and then you can connect more devices if you need to as well. You've got apps. So you can browse the internet off here as well. And I'll do a separate video on how to do that. You've got your Mercedes Me. Now Mercedes Me, uh, you do have to be connected from the dealer. So I'll explain that a bit more thoroughly a bit later on. And then we've got Comfort here is where you can actually adjust the ambient light. So you've got 64 colors to choose from. And I wanna try and get this car in the dark if I can, a bit darker. So I will we'll try and show off those ambient lights because you've got ambient lights everywhere, including the doors, the air vents. It's just really, really nice. Now you can change the brightness as well and you can link the zone. So if you want certain things less and on, you can, but I would just have everything on. That's just me. But if you find that, you know, and you're on the motorway and you've got you might have a lot of glare on the windscreen from the ambient lights you could reduce certain zones that's a useful feature then effects you can change the effects as well uh, i would have these on but that's me and climate that's really cool what you can do is if i change the temperature you can see all the vents are going red because i'm increasing the temperature if i decrease the temperature they go blue. How cool is that? I love that. I'm very easily pleased, aren't I? Now, let's go back. So I'm showing you comfort. Information just gives you information as you're driving. And you can see I've got vehicle information. And then I've got the engine information if I need it. So, uh, it's got a nice tone to this car, hasn't it? For a little 1.3 engine. Sounds really good. Then settings, now this is the main settings of the car. So if I click on collision uh, avoidance, these are the main settings of the car. And you can see, I'd leave that. That's useful, you know, when it's snowy, you might want to switch that off, but I'd always just keep it on. And even in the snow, I'd try and keep it on because uh, it is a very useful system. Uh, the active brake assist. Now I would actually set this to late that's my preference and I find that it's less disruptive while you're driving so that's how I would set it and then also the active lane keeping assist I change that to late as well now, advanced support I don't know what that does let's give that a click advanced support I'm not gonna lie I don't know what that does uh, let's click on I so advanced support is activated the function also to broken lane markings 
very useful. Interesting. Now I know what it is. So that's that. And you've got your assistance, speed limit assist. I'd have this on. Kind of visual. You can have audible as well. Oh, interesting. Oh, so audible is probably, it'll probably beep if you're going above the speed limit, I guess. And then you can change the threshold. So at the moment it's set to one. Uh, I'd probably set it to a couple at least. I'll do three if that's what I would do anyway. And then you can see some more information on that as well. I go back, you got a camera, and then this is really useful. You know, if your camera's dirty, you can click on open camera cover, and that will then open the camera cover. You can clean your lens on the actual camera. The great thing on the Mercedes is the camera always folds away after you've used it, so it should always stay clean. You've got parking as well. If I give that a click, uh, you can set the warning tones as well, which is really useful the volume, the tone, so I'm going to keep that as that, audio fade out, audio fade for warnings, yeah I'd keep that on, time of warning, you can set that as well, I'd probably set it the way it is, I'm happy with that, and then maneuvering assistant, driveway assist, close range braking, that's very useful, I'd keep that on as well, and you got your vehicle, you can change the winter tire limit, the manual shifting. Oh yeah, so if you use the, the paddles, that's something I didn't mention. Now the paddles, you've got up here for going up a gear, and then you've got down for going down a gear. Now while you're driving, you can see when I put it into manual mode, you'll get the M. So M1 just means it's in gear one. And then if I want to put it back into auto mode, just put all the way down and the car's back in drive. So I just needed to show you that. Forgot to show you, now I have. So I've shown you that. You've also got the station search for filling your petrol or diesel. And then you've got car wash mode as well. And that's very useful if you go through a car wash. Vehicle protection, I'd keep this on, but the only time you wanna switch off the interior motion sensor is if you ever leave anyone inside the car and you lock them, them in. I usually do that when I've gone to fuel the car, I'll leave the occupants in the car, lock the car. And I'll make sure, I, before I lock the car, I switch this off just so the alarm doesn't go off but uh, when you come back in and you start the car it should come back on automatically but that is a very useful feature and then always keep that on the tow away protection unless you're being towed away got automatic locking so the car will lock itself i think of above 10 miles per hour the car doors will lock so i'll keep that acoustic lock keep that off i'd recommend keeping that off only because if you have a neighbor with a baby and you lock your car, the alarm, the, the horn will honk every time you press the lock button. So I would always leave that off. But if you want to annoy your neighbors, put it on. Automatic mirror folding, I'd have that on. Basically, when you lock the car, the mirrors will fold. So I'd have that on. Then dynamic select, you can customize the individual driving mode so you can change how the gearbox drives so if you want it more sporty or a comfort or economical uh, I'd keep it in sport for individual mode steering I would prefer to have it in comfort the lighter steering sport is just a heavier one and then you've got ESP I'd keep that in comfort as well sport just allows you to rev a bit higher it's a bit naughtier really you can set it to ask when you start the car as well. I'm just gonna leave that just like there. And then the lights as well. So you can change how the lights work. So I'd actually have this on. So you'll notice the lights on the mirrors as well. Whoopsie daisies. And then we've also got 
the interior lighting delayed switch off now I'd have this on only because I like that theater the light it's so convenient in the night to have those interior lights on before you leave your car and then the exterior lighting delay I like to actually keep that on for 60 seconds uh, only because where I live it's quite dark so having that extra light is just helpful but you can set it all the way off if you need to ambient lights I've shown you that before so that's the same uh, if I go back you've got system as well and then you can if you don't like using this function I don't want to say it because then it will come on and I don't want it to but you can switch it off if you don't like using that voice assistant if you click here that's very useful so certain people can only say use that use that feature I don't want to say it and then you can do online recognition so that's activated I'd actually have that on as well and then proactivity that's a really useful feature so if you do ever leave your phone in the car the car will let you know that you've left your phone in the car so I'd have that on oopsie display brightness this is where you change the brightness so you can increase the brightness decrease the brightness I'm not gonna lie I could just about it's very minimal I probably would want to test this out in the night I think that's when I'll probably notice the the brightness there let me know if that's if that's actually made a difference in the night uh, increasing or decreasing the brightness I'm gonna try and get my hands on one of these to drive in the night hopefully one with a premium plus and then graphic goodies yeah I'd have this on only because during the year like Christmas you'll have like a Christmas theme which is quite nice for your for your infotainment now if you ever drive abroad and you need to change the miles to kilometers click on kilometers and now you'll see the dials have changed from uh, from mph to kilometers and I've got mph just there if I want to change it back I'll just click on miles and it's changed back to miles very easy languages you can change the language if you need to I'm happy with English look at that you got all these different languages so Mercedes-Benz are trying to cater for everyone as many people as possible and then you can change the settings for the keyboard, the handwriting second signature recognition. So that's pretty cool. Readout, handwritten entry. Very cool. You can reset everything as well. And then if I go to information, you've got your owner's manual built into the car. So if you if you're not sure about something, just click here. You'll find the manual on the system. It's way better than reading an actual book on this. Um, definitely check that out you can just search for stuff and then you can see what system information you got and legal information and then I'm just trying to see so back in system there was a few other bits so you got control elements so acoustic feedback you got your touch control feedback that's for your screen audio the greeting tone the parktronic so you can change a lot of things and it's kind of the similar things but speech volume your ringtone volume that's very useful voice output oh, that's very useful you can change the volume for that the entertainment yeah we've been there before internet and bluetooth so you can hotspot off your phone and i'll show you how to do that in the future i've got a feeling it's going to be very similar to uh, the c-class but I will do a video on that just to double check if it is the same in the future. Data protection, you can add a PIN number to this if you want to. And then you can change the uh, times as well if you need to. So you've got the settings there. And then the software update, uh, I would actually allow that. And then if you want to reset everything back to factory. So if you were to buy this car as a used car, go here click on reset 
and then it'll just set everything back to the original settings. So definitely do that if you've bought this car as a used car. So I've shown you settings and now you've got you've then got Apple CarPlay which I've shown you already. Now moving down we have got the controls for the temperature so I can adjust the temperature by going down and up and you can see when I click on it you've got a temperature symbol there and then you've got it uh, what mode you're on as well so if I click this one you can see what mode you're on um, but what I would do is you can adjust the, the fan speed as well so you can switch it off completely by going down if you go up you can then increase the actual blower setting so you'll see there can set an auto mode as well so the light means the auto modes on if I click that you can then set it off auto and the only thing auto about the car now is the where the air is distributed so now automatically the car will figure out how to distribute the air so the windscreen the bottom of the car all of that will be automatic and I find if you leave it in auto that's the best setting because you don't get a misty screen. That's my recommendation. Moving back, uh, this is for your front screen. This is useful when the car is ice. You can just de-ice it. Just take 10, five, 10 minutes and that'll be de-iced. You got your hazard lights. You got your rear uh, screen to switch that on and off if you need to. And then you've got your, this button's really useful. If you click this button, uh, let's say you're going past a farm or through a tunnel or you're behind a lorry, click this button and then the car will try and keep the interior as fresh as possible. And that's really useful as well on a long journey to do. Uh, occasionally every hour or so, press that button and you'll just get a bit more of a fresher uh, interior experience. I always leave the AC on car is designed to have the AC on so use it it is really useful it only uses a couple of mpg more uh, but you've got a pollen filter built into the car so it's really good for people with allergies as well and that's just a button that doesn't do anything and that's a button that doesn't do anything so I'm guessing that's for the 35 and the 45 model I didn't show you the start switch properly you've got the start switch here and then this button here if you press that you've got the auto stop if i press that on the eco st stop will just come on so every time i stop the car the car will just switch off automatically i'm just getting a message here because uh, i've been running the car and it's realized that i've not done anything so it will switch off by itself which is really useful to save fuel on so we've also got some storage here as well so if i push this you've got your area here for wireless charging so you can put your phone there and it will charge you've got your USB-C slot here um, and then you've got your 12 volt socket you've then got your uh, cup holders and this as well that comes out just like that which is quite useful so you can get a bigger cup you can place the key here as well so a really useful feature is the key can be placed here and it gives it a quick charge as well now I would always recommend once a month uh, swapping the keys around and using both keys uh, that's my top tip and what you might find is when you come to service the car when you need a major service done on the car take both keys and what they'll do they'll replace the batteries as part of that service now that's that then you've got the buttons down here if you press this button that will then allow you to do use the automatic uh, self parking feature now I will do a separate video on how to do that I'm going to try and get my hands on this next week and I'll show you how to do that. And then we've got the volume controls. If I push this, I can then mute the music. But if I hold it, yep, you'll see a message pop pops up. Don't want to put the display off or the system off. I can do that there. But if I want to switch it back on, I can just hold it again. And then this infotainment will come on by itself. Then you've got the dynamic button here. If I give that a click, you can now see it's an eco mode. If I press it again, it changes to sport. 
and then individual and that'll just change the the actual driving feel of the car in terms of the steering wheel the transmission will be a bit faster uh, if it's if it's set to sport mode and then the ESP as well but I just keep in comfort comfort's the best one I find I just set it to individual um, if I want to go a bit faster but sport mode's really useful on a motorway journey because it'll hold the gear longer and then eco I find that's really useful if you're on stop start traffic so it'll just use less fuel what happens is in eco mode the fans as well uh, reduce their the power and I think the AC might even switch off by itself so that's a really useful feature just to save fuel now you've got your area here to store things as well you have got storage here as well and it's quite a big storage you can put the manual here as well which is quite handy and you've got some storage here as well you've got your locking wheel bolts I'd probably put that in the boot I would or the trunk, I won't bother with that, you're barely going to use that. And then you've got some storage here as well with the USB C slots again. You have got USB C slots at the back for rear passengers as well, which is very useful. So, four USB slots in total. Moving up, you've got the sun visor with a courtesy light, which is very useful. You can store cards here as well. And then you've also got the courtesy light for passengers as well. Again, so a place to store a card. And then you've also got the grab handles for rear passengers. And then at the top, we have your reading lights, rear lights, and then the full lights for interior use and then if you find that you know when you open the door you don't want the lights to come on you can press that switch and then you've also got the reading lights for the passenger and then you've got Mercedes me as well if you click that you can see it's gonna contact Mercedes but if I want to cancel that just click the cancel button there but that is a very useful contact number to have now if you were to ever break down, press that button. What that will do is contact Mercedes-Benz. The car has its own SIM card built into the car. So you don't need to worry about using your own data when phoning Mercedes-Benz because it, the car's got it all built in. Now, if you will do what I call them yourselves, you can. It's just in the door sill here. So that button is really useful. Uh, because it's for your Mercedes Benz breakdown. So if you were to have a breakdown, don't bother ringing uh, your own breakdown recovery. You don't need it. You've now got it built with the car. Now you get that standard for three years with the manufacturer's warranty. After the three years, as long as the car has had a service from Mercedes Benz, then all you need to do is press that button because it's included up to 30 years. So as long as you get your car service through a Mercedes Benz dealer, you've got that service. How cool is that? That's a, such a useful feature. It's just good to know, because what they'll do is, if they can't fix the car there and then, they'll try their best to, but worst case scenario, they'll have to tow it, they'll take it to a dealership that's near to that vicinity to get them to fix the car, and then what they'll try and do is either get you a taxi, or they'll try and arrange a courtesy car. So whatever's the best option at that particular time. On a Sunday, you're going to struggle, but on the weekday, you're going to have more options. So that's really useful to have. And then you've also got the Mercedes Me stuff as well, which I haven't explained properly. Now, Mercedes Me uh, is a really useful feature to have. Now, if you were to buy the car through a Mercedes Benz dealer, they'll automatically get you connected to Mercedes Me. And what that allows you to do is use the Hey Mercedes function, which is a, such a useful feature, I think. You can, it's the voice assistant of the car, so you can ask the car stuff to do stuff. And I think that's a really useful feature. The other thing is you can get the app then connected as well. And that allows you to see things such as where the car's parked. When you're at home, you can see how much fuel you've got, how much your tire pressures are. It's really good when you want to plan a journey 
So I find that very useful for my car, but you might not. So, but you don't have to have the app, but having Mercedes me connected to, connected with you is very useful. I think you just get those added benefits that you've paid for for the car. You might as well just use it. Now, if you were to b not buy your car from a dealer, let's say it was a lease car or you've bought a used car, then what you would need to do is go to your local dealer with your logbook and your driving license to just prove that it's your car. You could use your passport if you want to. Now, if the car is a lease car, then I would say to you is you may need to get permission from the leasing company to give you uh, access to Mercedes me. Some leasing companies can be a bit funny because they don't want you to be connected to the car because when you give your car back that you'll be able to see where the car's parked and stuff like that. You can sometimes unlock the car as well through Mercedes me. So that's why leasing companies don't really like to use it. But if the company does allow you to do that, fantastic. Ask them to get you connected through Mercedes me. If they can't, get them to email you to say that they've given you permission to use the Mercedes me features, including the app, and then take that email to your dealer with your driving license or passport. And that will then be enough evidence for you, for them, for the dealer to then get you connected to Mercedes me. The final button I want to show you is the SOS button. Now, if I give that a click, you can see this button here. If you press that, that will then send your location to Mercedes Benz and they'll check if you're okay. Uh, they'll ask you if you need help with from the police, the fire brigade or the ambulance and they'll send that relevant people out. Now, if you were to crash and the airbags ever went off, then the SOS system will work automatically, which is a fantastic feature, I think. So if the airbags were to go off, what will happen is the location of your car will be sent to Mercedes-Benz through the speaker. Someone will check if you're okay. And if they don't get a response, they'll just send everyone out to you. The fire, the police and the ambulance. How useful is that? I think that's a fantastic feature to have. One thing I should have mentioned about the Mercedes-Me button is for your breakdown. If you were to ever get a puncture, uh, you've got some issues with your tires, just press that button. What'll happen is, instead of using the tire inflation kit, which can destroy your tire and you'll have to get a new tire, Mercedes-Benz will try and get that fixed over on the road for you. Worst case scenario, they might put a spare tire on. Now, on the in the UK, when you're driving on the motorway, legally, you should not be changing the tire. That's why you need the breakdown recovery people. They may do it for you or they may tow your car and do it in a safer location. And then uh, they can put the spare tire on. So that's a really useful feature to have. Worst case scenario, they'll take it to the local dealer uh, to try and get that replaced for you. Let me know. Do you guys think that's a really useful feature? I think it is. Now, the final feature I want to show you is how to release the, bo the bonnet. And to do that, you just pull this lever Done, you've got a little catch that you just need to pull. So you've got it just there. Give that a push. You've got gas struts, so that opens that up for you. And then you've got access to your engine. If you need to, you can top up your oil. You've got your washer fluid here. You've got access to the battery. I think that's the main bits that you really need on the car. But realistically, I won't even bother doing that. I'll explain why when I'm back in the car. Just close it, just like that. Don't have to use too much force. Again, top tip, what I would recommend you guys doing. Now, what you might find is during the year, let's say summer, uh, what I would recommend is getting your summer health check done. And then during the winter, getting your winter health check done. What I tend to do is if my car usually in for a service during the summertime, so the summer health checks done at the same time. And then in the winter, I'll take it back in, I'll book it in and get the winter health check done. That's where they'll top up your washer fluid and things like that. And I think that's a really useful feature. They'll check your tires for you. They'll check your wipers conditions. It's all done and it's nice and easy and it's usually done. Uh, within a couple of hours and sometimes they even do a complimentary car wash which is quite nice 
Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe as it helps me and the channel grow. Please like this video. Also comment if you have any suggestions or questions. Check out my next video where I'll show you the cruise control and speed limiter and also the self-automatic parking feature, which is a really useful feature. Thanks again for watching.